Tonight I want to talk about the seven beliefs that I, that I believe it takes to win at whatever you want. And I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell a little bit of story, a little story with each of them and kind of just give you my, uh, give my rundown on them. Whenever it's been something that's been tough, I've always been able to focus on what I call the future, right? And tonight I want to give that a different name. Like the future is one of the seven Fs. It's one of the things that I focus on in my, my coaching and my classes or in my, uh, my council with the guys that I work with. But thinking big, right? The one thing that's always made me realize that I have something more to do in my life was the fact of my ability to think big. Now, even in the fact that when I was only putting together one, two, three, four days worth of sobriety time and I was coming back and fighting this addiction, and I was having to pay off 20 to 20s of tens of whatever, how many thousands of dollars to the dealership. Like you're in a fucking pit and you're in a spot where things are, things are difficult. And the last thing you want to do is like think big and think like the most positive thoughts you could. But as a matter of fact, the first step that I need, think that I needed or that, that I believe you need as well is that if you want to win, you've got to be able to believe big. You've got to be able to think big. You've got to get, be able to get to the point where you can literally see something so much bigger, whether that's a future, whether it's a movement, whether it's um, having your kid full time, whether it's putting down the drugs and alcohol for life, it doesn't matter. You've got to be able to dream and see it. And some of the things that I think people do is they lack the belief when they're in their pits to be able to see what's truly out there and what's actually ultimately possible for them. Another thing, the second thing, and this keeps people from actually, it causes them to fail, is the fear of the failure. I believe that every time you're going to face something new and you want to level up the next level, that this, the, fail, the fear, the the, the fear gets its grip around you. It starts reaching in and clawing on and trying to get you to stop. And people get so paralyzed and so petrified of the fact that they're going to feel like they're going to fail that they get to the point they're afraid of it that they won't even move forward. So how can you believe that you have what, like you're going to win or going to get something you want if you're afraid of even failing? Because that keeps you from taking the first step. See, dreaming big is kind of easy because even though it's difficult to feel it at that time. It's a mind thought. It's a control that you could do there. But the fear of the failure is something real that's trying to hold you back every single day. It's trying to limit you, literally limit your life. It's trying to push you back. The third thing is you have to have an unwavering resolution to succeed. And what do I mean by that? You've got to be able to want to put in the hours of work. You've got to be able to come up with a schedule. You've got to be able to figure out how can I beat this struggle, beat everything with a like mathematical, some sort of systematic way that is going to keep you so strongly convicted in the fact that you can win that nothing's going to stop you. I read a quote somewhere. I don't know word for word, but it was, um, it was, uh, Kentucky fried chicken. What's that guy's name? Colonel Sanders, right? Colonel Sanders. So he said something about how he knew that he was going to die before he was going to die. He was so convicted. He was going to be able to he was going to win or he was going to die trying. He was going to get his secret recipe out there. He was, going to, he was so convinced he came up with a resolution to himself that no matter what happened, he was going to succeed. See, he had the ability to sell himself on the belief that he could succeed at whatever it may be. Some of you guys out there think that uh, you, don't, you can't succeed or you think it's not possible for you. And you limit yourself. The fear set in, all these different things you're doing, like boom, literally you're just freaking done. Whatever the voice is and you're just done. The fourth thing that I believe is you have to be a, a man, in my case, a man, right? I wrote down a man of action, but you've got to be a person of action. No problem is going to get done. I mean, I'm a huge firm believer in God and faith and doing it and, you know, having faith that everything's going to work out. But getting down on my knees and just praying and hoping and wishing that it's going to get fixed is never going to fix. This doesn't matter if I'm trying to build a company. This doesn't matter if I'm trying to put content out. This doesn't matter if I'm trying to do anything. You've got to be able to take action. You've got to make the ability to, to be that person. And when you look at action, it's got to be every single day of your life, no matter what you do, no matter what you step into, no matter how you do it, whether it's building the business, whether it's getting up and, and putting an action plan together to succeed in the morning, no matter what, you've got to be a person of action. The fifth thing is you've got to be able to believe in your capacities to succeed. One of the things I run into with many of my, um, the guys that I coach, or there's some sort of belief, or it doesn't even have to be a coach. It's some of you guys that watch this. It's people that I've met in my personal life that like literally you don't believe that the success is for you. It does, you don't think that, you know, you don't think that you have it in you. 
You don't believe you have the capacity to take more. You believe that just like, fuck, what you see in your local town or what I see in this local town of Elkhorn, Wisconsin is what is success to me, right? The capacity of what it takes to succeed, you don't believe in it. The sixth thing, and I talked about it, which is like the first part of this show, was always maintain a positive mental attitude. No matter what, when things get difficult, when life gets tough, when it's hitting you hard, the one thing that's always been able to pull me through outside from that foundation and believing on that was the positive mental attitude. Now, I know for a fact, I'm going to talk about the parent, parenting um, portion of it right now. There was a time that I was about to write off my rights to my son, and I thought that was a good thing. You know, My ex-wife told me, this, he's better off without you. The world's better off without you. You should basically just fucking kill yourself, and you're a fucking loser. You're deadbeat, all these things, right? And I bought into that. Right? When you're already in a low and you're in a pit and you're just fucking drunk and high and going, you're, you fucking buy into these things, right? You start thinking and you're like, well, this person knows what's best for me. Maybe I should just fucking go kill myself. Maybe I should just go, just disappear and never come back, right? But then when I realize, I'm like, dude, that is just wrong. Here's a dude that's been positive. You had all these different wins in your life. You can't see him right now because it's been difficult. But at the same time now, You've got to figure out how to recapture that positive mental attitude. Now, I talked today about my physical pain from the gym hurting and being able to fix it with, the, with the, putting on the, the positive mindset. It doesn't matter what your struggle is. It doesn't matter what the addiction is. All these struggles, everything we've done, and I'm looking at a list of people that are commenting on here, and I know many of these people have been through similar um, walks, of my, walks like myself of life, and these dudes literally are switching to a positive mindset, and they've completely changed the way that their lives work, Right? They look at the things completely different. And number seven, the most important thing out of all is you've got to fucking work hard. And I've been practicing and preaching this for the past two years on here over and over and over, maybe to the point where like it didn't really, to, to maybe the message is played out or whatever, but the truth is I don't fucking care because at the end of the day, I know that no matter what I want to succeed in, it's going to take my work. I could get on and make all the videos that I want. I mean, one of the times... When I first started doing this, I used to care about the likes and the, the things and who was seeing it and all these different, like, who was really watching it. But the truth is, now I don't give a shit about that. I care about the one person that needed to hear it. And I will work as completely hard to share this, the same message, to help people battle the struggle, to help people uh, become better men, better women, better fathers, better mothers, better, better, just better human beings by continuously beating down and working hard. And sometimes what that means, literally is doing the hard work on yourself. Being able to withstand the pain, the heat, the pressure, the shit that makes you want to quit. I read about The Rock. I really like The Rock. So all the time I'm looking at The Rock, right? And he's, he did, uh, you know, he had a post or a video or something he did the other day, and it's been kind of like a signature go-to phrase is, the dude says, I'm always the hardest worker in the room. I've never been an NFL pro. I've never been, you know, won uh, Super Bowl. I've never done all these things, but I've always been the hardest worker in the room. And when you think about that, and the reason I saved that for last, is because if you apply it to anything that you want, whether it's working at parenting, whether it's working at building this business, whether it's working at building the sales process you want, whether it's fucking overcoming the struggle, whether it's beating addiction, no matter what it is, you've got to work at it. Nothing in this life comes easy. And this sounds like the so cliche, mundane, day in and day out message that your great, great, great fucking grandfather's probably been telling you, but the truth is, they were fucking right. They knew what it took to work. Somewhere on the long, along the lines, people decided to sit back and make a bunch of stupid videos, do some different things, and think they call it work, right? You've got to be able to put the work in on yourself. You've got to be able to make a decision to win at what you're going to do. And it's going to take time. It's going to take energy. You know what? I don't have it on my list here. But one of the most important pieces of all this together, embodied together, never fucking give up. No matter what you're going through, 